So he brought up from the grave, so to speak, buried warriors, every nation, but especially here because they know if this one fell, everything else would too. But you know, they are mistaken. There's enough power in one believer to bring about the entire will of God in one, no matter where they are. But we're not going to give up this one either. And you're not going to give up your nation either. We're not going to give up. Say it. I'm not going to give up. If there's somebody sitting next to you, look at them and say, I am not going to give up. I remember my little granddaughter. She was, she's, she's a grown woman now, but she's just a little bitty thing then. Yeah, just sat down on Krista, you know, as Krista was playing with her. Just, she's just a little bitty thing. And they're just playing and playing. And she just sat out on Krista and just covered her face up with something and was just, just holding her down. And, and Krista, you know, she got where she couldn't get out and she felt like she was smothered. And my little granddaughter leaned over and said, no one can heal you. Why don't you just give up? <laughs> Well, no, <clears throat> there is someone who heals us. And it is God Almighty. And we have made our appeal to heaven. And I got news for you. Heaven has heard the appeal. <clears throat> heaven has heard the appeal. You know, the old flag that said we appeal to heaven. That was one of our flags. Well, we hold up the cross, the tree. We say we appeal to heaven. Hallelujah. Now, the Lord knew what was at stake, so he brought up from the grave, so to speak, buried warriors against tyranny. The prophetic word, I want you to listen to this and take notes if you're going to take notes on something. The prophetic word released from God through a prophet's mouth actually places the image of the finished event and the details leading up to it in place until the word is made. Now, let's go over to Isaiah 46.10 right quick, just so that somebody won't say he never opened his Bible. He never even opened his Bible. Yes, it did. Look, it's open. I'm turning pages, and I'm looking at Isaiah chapter, all capitals, 46.10. It's circled and underlined. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not done yet, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. So out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. So we'll go over to Ecclesiastes, and we'll look at that just a moment. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Chapter 1, verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new. It hath already of old time, it hath been already of old time, which was before us. <laughs> Think about that. So, all these people and their original ideas. This is a thought no one's ever had. No, they have to. They've had it. They've had it. Just when you think you had the first thought ever on this certain subject, somebody will turn up with a manuscript 300 years old where somebody said it way back then. Hallelujah. Now, I said that and read those scriptures to show you this. What has been will be again. God requires that which is past. Is uh, let's, let's see if we can. Let's, let's don't just move on real quickly because I don't want. I don't want anybody tripped up on anything. There's something kind of heavy I want to say that is all in line with freedom. Praise God. Praise the living God. That's in Ecclesiastes 3.15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been. And God requireth that which is past. So, <clears throat> and he goes on to say, you know, and moreover I saw under the sun the place of judgment, the wickedness, that wickedness was there, and the place of righteousness, that iniquity was there. There is, there are things going on right now that they're in 
prophecy. They're in the prophetic. It says what has been will be again. God requires that which is past. He's speaking also of the prophetic, and it was done in the mind of God way before you and I were ever even made. Do you know that you realize that before you, before that spark of life came into your mother's womb, God already knew you would be watching this today. He already knew that. And he prepared a word for you on this road, this traveling journey, filled, uh, faith-filled, excitement-filled road you're on right now. God prepared this word today for you to hear. Isn't that amazing? God is that big. We need to get in awe of God again. We need to let God wow us again. Amen. Now, the prophetic word released from God through a prophet's mouth actually places the image of that finished event and the details leading up to it in the place. And it remains that that really don't is just kidding themselves. They know he did. That should be obvious to everyone, to all. Yet this world is hiding it. Those spirits actually make something look one way when it's actually another. That is the rulers of the darkness of this world. That class of spirit, you know, this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, four classes of being, of spirit, uh, listed from the least to the highest. Then you have four aspects to the devil, the dragon, that old serpent. All of these fit perfectly together. Each class of spirit works with, with each category of the enemy. Then you have, <coughs> in four stages, demoralization, destabilization, crisis, and normalization. And notice it's all fours. Everything works together this way. Now watch this close. We're not going to get into that, but I do want you to see this. Everyone knows this should be obvious to all, yet the forces that be are aided by this class of spirit. The dragon, that old serpent, which is the of the darkness, they are aided. What you're seeing is being aided by the third class of, of rogue demonic spirits that are in the earth. And they're, they're called rulers of the darkness. And if you really got down to it, it would mean to make something look one way when it's actually another way. Now you know what spirit you're dealing with and a class of spirit, you see. Yes, Lord, you tell me when to say that. Yes. Okay. Now, prophetic words paint the clear picture of what the truth is. Therefore, prophets are sought to be silenced it on the prophetic word and no other. Why? There's no path left. There's no path left that anyone can find for him to walk in back in on. So the prophet reaches into the future, the end from the beginning, begins to prophesy the end, and that prophecy of the end picture sits in place until, makes sense, everybody with that? So, this is where the prophet's words are right now. You may have the jackal by dawn on this side, but the ring is empty on this side where the right and keep declaring the end, the rightful picture. Because I'm not seeing the beginning. Listen close. I'm seeing the end from the beginning. So I leave the end in the ring where he really supposed to sit until he walks in. And when he walks in, he'll occupy that space then. <clears throat> oh, I hope everybody's getting that. Now, there's no other path left to him that we can see, and yet there is an inv invisible path under the Red Sea. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody remember that. Now, if the prophets are silenced, see that prophetic word that I'm, I'm, I keep declaring the end from the beginning, that prophetic word has created a solid path for him to walk in on. 
All the prophets keep declaring, 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 declaring. Well, they've created a path. What we've done is our prophetic words are creating a road that's solid enough for him to walk in on. See. Now, prophets, I speak to prophets, do not stop prophesying. And cause the path to disappear from beneath his feet. For he is considering walking it. His own party for the most part abandoned him. Don't do the same thing by quit prophesying the end from the beginning. <clears throat> now, the reason a lot of prophets stopped now, this is a word to the prophets because I don't know why I sense that prophets that backed away, ran away, walked away, whatever reason. I'm not your judge. You're, you're, you're a servant of the Lord. He's your judge. <clears throat> I'm not even qualified to stand in such a place over another prophet or in the life of one. I can tell you what the Lord says, but he, your decision is your decision. Now, I can bring the cord of the Lord into your realm, just like you do others. But the reason a lot of prophets stopped prophesying, stopped talking about this, because they did not understand the principle of Isaiah 46.10 and Ecclesiastes 3, that he declares the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that haven't happened yet. I need you to really Listen close to me now. Anytime I start talking about heavy things, don't shut your brain off. Don't start doing this. And, get, and getting sleepy. Come on, engage with me now. It's because they didn't understand this principle. Don't be so hard on them. Let me, let me give you a reason what, what probably happened. They did not understand that God declares the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that haven't happened yet. Listen close. They didn't understand that. So they saw the end and prophesied it. Not knowing they were just at the beginning of it. <laughs> well, wait a minute. We'll, we'll, we'll get that said in a minute. So they saw the end because they are prophets. They saw it. And they didn't realize that they were at the beginning of it. We're not done. They didn't realize they were at the beginning of it. They did not miss it. Do you hear me, prophets? You did not miss it. You simply saw the end and thought it was at the beginning. So you expected the beginning to begin with the end. <laughs> Come on, guys. It does not work that way. Let me say it again. You did not miss it. You simply saw the end. And it was very vivid. And you thought it was at the beginning. So you expected the beginning to begin with the end. And it doesn't work that way. However, now we approach the end. You saw in the beginning, the more you prophesy the end, the more solid the road to it becomes. See, you, prophets saw the end, and that's what they do. They usually see, you know, it's like I used to say, is a prophet sitting on the front row. Everybody in the congregation is laughing. The prophet's crying. And they say, why are you crying, prophet? Well, I see what's coming. And then everybody's crying when it comes and the prophet's laughing. Why are you laughing, prophet? Because I see what's coming. You see the end from the beginning, but what happens is, is if you ever confuse it, and your sight could have been very great, and you saw that, you saw the end, but you thought the end would begin at the beginning. But you saw the end from the beginning of the road that goes to the end. And hang their head down. People can look around. Ah, false prophet, false prophet, false prophet, false prophet. No, it's not a false prophet. 
those pointing their fingers at them saying false prophet, false prophet, never even saw the end to start with. Who are you to judge a prophet? Judge a prophet. They're God's servants. They're the Lord's servants. And you dare, a man rises or falls to his own master. Don't get in arrogance and rise yourself up above a prophet and say, I'm his master or I'm her master. No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not even mastering your own thoughts. You're just standing out there spewing out words fed to you from God knows where. Now, so they saw the end. Prophets, you saw the end from the beginning. You were just at the beginning of it. You didn't miss it. You just saw the end and you expected the end to start in the beginning. It never works that way. Now, let me, let me, let me give you something here. Uh, Genesis 3, 15. Now, let's look at that just a moment, just, just a few moments before we, we close today or, or move to something else, whatever the Lord wants. It's been a good 11th hour already, hasn't it? <clears throat> now, Genesis 3, verse 15. This is the Lord talking to the serpent and the woman between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. There's a lot of great different things. I was listening to a mighty man of God the other night talk about a revelation I'd never seen in this. But watch this. It says, I will put enmity between thy seed and her being prophesied here. Now, God sees the virgin birth. <laughs> so he's declaring the end <clears throat> from the beginning do you see that how many of you can see that in your own bible he's declaring the end of something from the very beginning of something but why didn't the beginning start with the end it don't work that way but yet if you backed on up you find out the lamb so you'll find out on day six on day three was when man's body was actually cast on day six, it was uncovered and there was prophesied. The end from the beginning. So, the end here is prophesied and the serpent was told, the seed of the woman is going to bruise your seed's head. And your seed's head is going to bruise her seed's heel. In other words, that he will absolutely put his foot on your head. And the only bruise Jesus would suffer from you is the crucifixion. And yet he came in their place. And God's declaring, he sees it all. He's already at Calvary. But yet, it didn't begin right here. The end wasn't in here to be seen. It just began right here is what I should have said. So you expected the end to begin in the beginning. Just walk into the full-blown manifestation of everything. But it's out there. And the more he was prophesied of, the more solid the road became until this word he kept being talked about. You know, when, when it was narrowed down, it just kept coming. He's a type, the ark is a type of Jesus. Everything, and this whole book is a revelation of one person, Jesus Christ, and his whole body is mentioned in here. But the book is a revelation of him. It is him, and you start seeing him show up. You see that the sea, then you start walking forward and it starts happening. David hit Goliath. Where at? In the toe? No, in the head. And he's kept coming on. It kept coming, getting more and more clear. The ark was built and he was a type of Jesus. And when he did, God headed toward the future, ran by and slammed the ark door and ran on ahead of it. And when we were keep, keeping on going, keeping on moving, and the road was becoming more solid. And you'll find when Joseph's brothers turned and came back, when he told them he was going to keep Benjamin and Judah stepped up and said take me instead of him take me instead of him 
And then it located where the seed of the woman was coming from. He was coming from the tribe of Judah who was willing to give himself for everyone else. And the road was more solid and more solid. And the Bible said a scepter wouldn't depart from out of Judah's hand until Shiloh come. He's talking about Jesus in Genesis. And he keeps talking about him and talking about him. And you see the kinsman redeemer with Boaz. And you keep going through the scripture. You keep moving through the scripture. You see his redemptive. And so now we knew that Jesus was coming through this line. And their address kept, became getting more and more clear because the road was more and more solid. Every prophet, every prophet would start prophesying of him until Isaiah said that, you know, starts talking about him, just says his name is Emmanuel and God with us and, and the virgin will. And keeps going. And it becomes more and more miraculous because the prophetic word is being the end picture is being declared in prophecy from the beginning. See, if, if it goes by the way the enemy told the prophets, man, it didn't happen. What you saw didn't happen. You might as well get out of it. No, what it is, is if that happened that way, then right here in Genesis 3, 15, suddenly the cross would have showed up. Mary would have showed up. Joseph would have showed Everything would have came on the scene, just materialized right there in front of everybody. But God being the prophet himself, you find Jesus prophesying his own future right there. And he said, ah, this is what's coming. And so it started in the beginning. The end was declared. He declares the end from the beginning. He don't declare the end as the beginning. Oh, I'm trying to get it said. But anyway, they start moving along and the, and the address gets clearer and clearer and clearer. And then you find out that, that he, was, he was in line for the throne through both Mary, his mother, and even through his stepfather, Joseph. A lot of people don't know, see, that Joseph was a descendant of Jeconiah. I think it was King Jeconiah who was told none of his descendants would ever reign. And I only mentioned Zerubbabel one time because Zerubbabel's in the line of Zechani uh, Jeconiah, but he couldn't become king, so he only became governor of David in Israel. That would explain to you why a man with such skill and such notoriety in heaven would hide out in a poor place like Nazareth. Because he didn't want to, couldn't reign. The right to reign in Jesus' life came through his mother, who was from another son of David. That's why there's two genealogies mentioned, Matthew and Luke. Hallelujah. Well, that's pretty cool. But what's happening is, is that the prophecy is being declared from the beginning. The end and the address is getting closer. We know it's coming. We know it's going to be this way. We know it's going to bruise the enemy's head. <clears throat> we know it's coming through Judah. We know it's going to be from the tribe. of. And the day came. He was born. The angels just broke through. Because it came to crunch time. It came to right there when he was declared. And by the time the, uh, the angel told Mary, they're listening. The... the you, you can't even imagine the strength of that young woman standing there looking at, at that angel. She, you can't find in there where she said, Eek, it's an angel, and ran and jumped on a donkey and hightailed it down the street running for her life. She just stood there in the face of an angel. He said, Hail Mary, you're, you're our, you are highly favored. She's staring at him. He says, you how the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. And you'll be it done unto me according to your word. Word came in her. You think about it. Somewhere between that time, oh my goodness, about that time the heavens started moving. And they were going to line up. We have to show the sign. The king is going to be born. Start arranging yourselves. Hallelujah. 
and somewhere in this time frame moving on through this, we're reading, watch now, what were they reading? Prophecy. They were reading the end from the beginning. And they started reading the writings of Daniel and the different prophets. And they started reading it. And they looked up and said, we have seen his star. His star. Because it appeared in the constellation Virgo, the virgin. So it's obvious they had studied the prophetic road. And when you see this sign, they wasn't astrologers. They were astronomers. They studied the heavens like Abraham was told. Look at the heavens. He was looking at the plan of the Redeemer coming. He was talking about his offspring. And so they're watching and they see the road. Here they come down the road. They're coming to Jerusalem. Somewhere after they left, the star disappeared. And somewhere about the time they got in there, they said Herod wanted to know, what time did you see that star? They had saw it about 18 months, two years, somewhere in that frame before Jesus was born. They saw, or at that time before he was at his birth, they either saw it at his birth or something. They saw about two years. And so Herod, that's years and under in Bethlehem. But when that happened, all of a sudden the heavens lined up. The night he was born, the star is seen. Soon as he was born, Mary's travail, her labor was like the world laboring. And people don't understand that, but here was coming the one that would lay, they would, that God would lay the sorrow, the Lord would lay the sorrow of the world upon him. And he was about to come through her womb, and her labor was intense. And Joseph was doing everything he knew to do. He was a just man, a man who believed God, a man who believed in the supernatural. Joseph wasn't even born again. Neither was Mary. Nobody was born again until Jesus rose from, because they believed he was coming. And so there they are, and they're, they're, they're doing everything they could. And Joseph believed the supernatural. Mary was pregnant, and Joseph said, uh, uh, Mary looked at him, and after she spent three months with Elizabeth, and now she's showing, and, and now Joseph is looking. And he was such a good man, he said he didn't want to humiliate her. He'd put her away privately, thinking she had been with someone else. But an angel appeared to him and said, Fear not, Joseph, son of David. You're a descendant. <laughs> so much, he never questioned it again. There's people born again, spirit-filled, tongue-talking, can't even believe the supernatural for two seconds at a time. They have to have a proven fact in front of them in the natural to prove something God is doing. And they have every, they have the word, the Holy Ghost, talking tongues, everything else, and still they can't believe for 10 minutes at a time that God is doing something supernatural. And if they see a supernatural event, a lot of them believe, well, that's just, let me explain what happened. And go to the history, the, his, the history channel written by a bunch of people who don't even believe God exists most of the time. Not many of them. If there's a few on there, I'm sure they are that do, but I'm telling you, we're blessed to have them on there. That's probably the reason the content even gets as holy as it does. Start explaining away the flood, Noah, the flood, the, this. Get all away, and Christians say, well, that's what really happened. That's what really happened. i tell you what happened at Jericho. This is what happened. The mortar was weak, and you know, and this and that. And just whatever. I don't know if they said that or not, but that's, it's just stupid explanations. Moses didn't really uh, cross the Red Sea in that deep of water. Where he crossed, it was only six inches deep. That's a real, that's real, that's a real argument somebody made. 
It's only six inches deep where he crossed. And like Brother Hagin said one time, he said, well, that's a greater miracle than anything I ever heard, that Pharaoh's whole army drowned in six inches of water. What did they do? Throw themselves out of the chariot and stick their face down in the water and just go. <laughs> While their horses stood and looked at them, and what was even worse than that is the horses said, well, we might as well come up with water. I mean, people can't even believe the supernatural, and that this is ex explanations we're asked to swallow. People say, well, you know, you just can't really believe in what you can't see. Really? You can't see air. Do you think you're breathing any of it? Well, maybe you're not. Don't you see, if you applied what you apply to God, to your natural life, you wouldn't live long because you wouldn't believe anything you do is real. Not knowing the spiritual created the natural. And so the natural cries out to reveal the spirit to you all the time. This is why flowers bud the way they do. They're trying to show God everything he put in them. And to serve you and me. Just to make, they, would, they live a whole season, live just to make your little spot of air when you pass by that tree and replace itself next year just to do it again. And it was. The Jews used to teach that in Solomon's court, the deer would walk into his kitchen every day and give themselves for his food. But they don't want to believe stuff like that. People don't. Solomon could communicate with ants. He learned how in that encounter with God and his wisdom. That's what he asked God for was wisdom. And God gave him wisdom, which is the ability to use knowledge. And you hear Solomon write about so many things. He wrote about ants. He wrote about eagles. He wrote about animals. He wrote about everything. Proverbs, he wrote all so many. Now, so the road of the to the prophetic, and, and I hadn't had any notes on all this. I'm just, you know, we've been going. But 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 the prophetic road, you're laying a the prophets are laying a solid road. See, concerning now. Okay, we know who won. Everybody knows who won. I think every possum in a tree knows who won. Everybody knows who won. And we know it's a silly, stupid, asinine thing to look at a man walk out to a press conference and start talking to these people here. There's a helicopter behind him. We hear the sounds. We see nothing much going on. But, and then he starts talking and smiling and does his hand like this and it passes through the microphone. And we're expected to believe this is reality. That's a very poor green screen. And you saw, you saw it happen. I'm talking about just pass their mic right through him. People in the world just goes, because <laughs> they don't believe anything. Just laugh about it. There should have been such an outrage. Said, if he's the real one, I want to see him in the real place, standing at the real desk, talking to the real people. I want to see reality going on in front of me right now because he works for me, not me for him. I want to see God gave him the position to protect our rights. I want to see it. I want to see it in reality. But you didn't see it in reality. You just see a bunch of blurred lines. And, and I, I don't know the people that put that out and did that, did it on purpose just to mock us. Because just to see how far we wouldn't cry out. And then talk about coming by your house and holding your arm out. And doing that. <laughs> well. So everybody knows that who won. 
So the prophet Saul saw it. I hope somebody's listening to this. That I'm talking about I hope prophets are listening to this. They saw it. That's why every prophet, every, every prophet, most every one of them knew it was true. And they saw it. Why would they all see such vivid things? I mean, prophets see amazing things. You know, I remember Brother Timothy, Timothy Dixon gave a prophecy the other day. He said it rained fish. I mean, and it did. So, I mean, and then the report came in, fish rained out of the sky. Now, do you think prophets that, that can hit things like that didn't see something as big as this? But everybody expected the end to appear at the beginning. But they saw the end from the beginning. And that meant if you want that end, you better start prophesying what you saw. So there will be a road that will lead you up to it. And when you finally get there, your prophecies that you've been holding that spot with all this time, you can, it will be moved walk into its place. <clears throat> Take your ministries back then. Hallelujah. Or stand up, do something, you know, pray, do something, shout. So here, so here we are. We are, we are moving toward this. Now, there's another reason prophets need to not hush. See, the road will disappear. If that prophetic road disappears, Let's just suppose the right sin, the rightful leaders of other nations will too. And those that are not very good in other nations will bow down to the slave trade. That it wasn't long after that, Britain abolished the law. Because of Wilberforce and so forth. And began to proclaim the gospel. They, they knew. Britain. That's who, that's who they were under at the time. It was from Virginia. Did you know at that moment in time it would have freed his already if it hadn't been against the law? Did you know Washington found a loophole? There was a, you can free them. So as he was dying, he called for a piece of paper and signed it and said, free them. So it shows you what was in their hearts the whole time. And America only had, Britain had 26%. But you know who had the most? Islam. Right now, that has ever existed in, in history. Right now. You know who runs it? Muslim nations. Islam. They've never quit. And it was our way through it. So the first thing we did in 1807 was ban the trade. Come on, folks. And in less than 200, 200 short years, we did what the world couldn't do in thousands. Because of God speaking into this nation. So we're not going to lose. That's all I'm, I guess I'm going to say. I'm, I'm off on something else now. We're not going to lose. We're not going to lose. Because I, I ain't going to shut up. I ain't going to shut up. There's other prophets ain't going to shut up. Shut up. What are you talking about shut up? We're not going to shut up. We don't shut up. Oh, yeah, you, you have to shut up when they come to your door. They don't know. They don't know what door they're coming to. We don't shut up. We keep prophesying it. Every scripture I find in the Word of God, every scenario I go through in the Word of God, everything the Spirit of God shows me within these pages concerning this time we're living in, there's not one of them that don't put that man back in office. Every one of them puts him back in his chair. Well, why ain't he come back yet? Well, let me ask you something. He had his own party leave him. They divided against him that year. They're right now trying to say he did things he didn't do, trying to do anything from that January the 6th thing. His own party split and just took the road out from under him. His own people, his own trusted party. Well, prophets, don't you pull the road out from under him. If he's going to go back in, he's going to walk a prophetic road to go back in. No other one. No other one. It's going to be the prophetic road. And as for me, 
I put mine out there. And it'll hold his place until he walks back in. Hallelujah. Well, I hope everybody got something out of that today. I hope they're excited. I hope freedom has come to their minds. And now they're excited about being free. Excited about knowing this. I don't care what kind of nation you live in. I don't care if it's in Cuba right now. They're not more powerful than the word of the living God. Nothing is more powerful than the word. You keep prophesying. Don't pull your prophecies back. If you do, that's the only hope that we've got. And you may be the only prophet in that nation, and you may not even know it, and you're the only one paving that road. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it's been a good 11th hour today, hasn't it? It's been a good one. It's been an exciting one. Music we didn't plan. We just started playing, and the next thing you know, it just happened, and I walked out on, on the platform, and right before the cameras came on, and you could see us, Robin looked at me and said, what key? I said, A minor. And that's it. And didn't even know what we were about to do. But it came out the way it came out, and look how it rocked as it went. It picked up steam. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so do we have some praise reports today? Okay, I want to hear some praise reports today. Somebody sent me one if I have my phone. Uh, off the prayer service the other night. Yeah, they'll get it. Check. There we go. Uh, Krista just sent this too. We had a um, prayer request that came through that said, um, long-term cancer today. Robin said a word for her. Say a word for her. Please commit her to Jesus. She's leaving today? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, they wanted you to say a word. So her. has she received Jesus as Lord? Um, if we're going by that, and she has, then I will say something about this. And if not, whisper in her ear and tell her, make Jesus the Lord of your life Amen. right now. And, if, and you know, if not... And, and you just say that. Don't underestimate the power that God can go to someone and talk to them. But you, you say it in their ear. And Lord God, if this dear soul has received you as Lord and they know you as their king, Lord God, and they've made up their mind they're going home, Lord, I ask you that the angelic hosts, some of them come and take them home and escort them into the kingdom so that they can see what you've prepared for them today. In Jesus' mighty name. And show their family where they are, Lord, so that there will be a great comfort on their family. You know, you can't override people's decisions. If they're deciding, I'm leaving today, then they're leaving. And so what you want to do is make sure they know Jesus before they go. Amen. That's right. That's right. Amen. And if they do, the word of the Lord is to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. It's an instantaneous thing. As soon as they exhale, they are in the presence of the Lord, and they see Him face to face. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. We had a few come through last week, praise reports that that I had, um, had saw through emails. Um, one said... Uh, she was talking about listening to teaching Chris's teaching on tithing and they had really internalized it in their home and they would they would speak tithers rights over their home and became avid tithers and she said her husband was at work and um I'm guessing just from what she said he works some in some kind of factory or something a hose a hundred times his size came loose and mm. was coming straight for him and he said he could feel the wind as it passed by him and she said, he came home and he said, man, God surely, surely was watching over me today. And she said, I, we claim tithers' rights for our house. She said, thank you guys for showing us about tithers' rights and that God was watching over us that day. How about that? He would, she said he would have surely. A minute, and, okay. and you and Roxanne do this segment right here. Okay. We've got a segment. We've got a segment. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I want to look for something, too. Oh, okay. Okay. Go ahead. Keep going. Right. I've got a couple more. Um. 
And this is from a, a sweet lady she wrote in. She's a widow, and she said family meant so much to her, and she had been praying for her daughter, who had recently gotten married in the last couple of years, who she had not communicated with in a, quite a while. And she had been praying for her, and she said when she would call, she wouldn't answer the phone. And she said she showed up at her house and gave her a big hug, and she said they went out to lunch with the rest of the family, and also her son, who she had not seen, came with them. Amen. So she said thank you to Jesus and the prayer team for praying for her Praise family God. members. And this one I say for last because it was so precious. I cried when I read it. It was just a one sentence, and she said, My 23-year-old daughter was born again after reading Brother Robin's Jesus, Why It Is the Way It Is on Christmas Day. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So That's why we celebrate That's Christmas. Right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> praise God. Praise um, I do have a, uh, a praise report uh, myself. Uh, this was sent to me this morning. And let me find it. There, there's been a lady that we have been praying for and believing and standing in agreement with her in uh, the state of Nebraska. And so we want to ask all of our partners to continue to pray with us and stand and, and believe with us because she was actually um, our contact uh, going to a meeting in Nebraska this year. And um, she is has been in the hospital. I, I knew I didn't hear from her for quite a bit of time. And she was in the hospital, and they had put her on a ventilator. And so she's been in there for now weeks. And uh, so uh, we've been praying. We've been standing in agreement because they're standing in agreement. Her family is in agreement. And today I got an update. Uh, they said they went to uh, the hospital with her, and... They said her oxygen level supported by the machine had been at 80% all of last week. On Saturday, they were able to lower it to 70%, and on Sunday, they lowered it to 65%. They said while we were there, Tracy opened her eyes twice and looked in our direction, and a tear ran down her face, and she raised her hands twice. And so they're continuing to pray healing scriptures over her and continuing that in the hospital room 24-7 so that they're speaking the word. So all of you just pray for Tracy to wake up, to get up out of this bed eye and declare the works of the Lord. So stand in agreement with us. Did you find what you wanted to share? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know <coughs> if this was said, if I said this on when Steve and I was doing the last or one of our uh, the intelligence briefings but I had said something about a uh, knee and elbow healed mm -hmm. was that I don't that know was Sunday. that was Sunday somebody wrote yeah okay said today during service <coughs> I received confirmation of my calling I had said something yeah. about that and have been asking I have been asking for confirmation for it was dropped heavy on my spirit that I am to be a prayer warrior and pray for anyone, anytime, anywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. Also, I was healed on my knee and elbow today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God Hallelujah. is absolutely, absolutely good. good. And so that was a prayer request that came in. I mean, a praise, praise report that came in from Sunday. So I want to let people know that their, their prayers are heard. God Amen. is listening. I expect some things today to come in from the prophetic words yes. that went out today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, today as you are getting your um, offering together, and we're going to give you the opportunity to give today, and we want to make that available to you. You know, we, we always just bring this to you as, as just an opportunity for you to give. You know, I, I spoke Sunday about how the enemy tried to keep the website down. Well, the enemy piped back up and said said, yeah, I thought you said it was because of us awesome people that crashed the server. Today it's the enemy. It was you awesome people that crashed the server. That's what happened. They told us. They said there's too much traffic. We can't hold it. So what happened was it was down. Well, then it came back up, but then it went down again, and it tried to stay down. You don't get this thing back up and running. And then when my dad and I stretched that staff towards those tech giants and said, you come at us, 
with a sword and a spear, but I come at you in the name of the Lord. And we called those giants to fall. It came back up within the next few hours. Yeah, you, have to, you have to remember something, too, that the, the site should have been able to handle all of the partners. But once it came back up, I mean, before it came back up, the host shut us down. It wasn't the partners that yeah. they came and overloaded the site, which was a wonderful thing. Yeah. But then they shut us down and said, because you're affecting others. So they, they put the enemy told, you know, that was the enemy's fault. Yeah. 